The Lakers and Bucks haven't been atop the league at the same time like this for 48 years, back when Wilt and Kareem were going at it in the same conference. Interestingly, the Bucks are led by a player with the same length and grace that Kareem possessed, while the Lakers' biggest star does bear some similarities to the raw power and strength of Wilt. But what strikes me most about these two teams is not their similarities and how they go about decimating the rest of the league, but their differences. Stark contrasts in style and play type that show one team following the modern evolution of the game and the other going decidedly old school. Let's first look at what these two have in common. Both have elite offensive and defensive ratings, which makes sense since in order to have the best records in your conference, you need the best of both worlds. Interestingly, they both post up a lot. Giannis gets the lion's share down low on that left block, where he's rated a little above average. For every solid move he makes to go into the middle and score with that jump hook of his, there's an equal amount of misses from that same move. And the same could be said about turning over the right shoulder. Sometimes it looks great, and others, there's no chance that ball is going in. Anthony Davis gets by far the most touches down low in the Lakers, and he's more efficient than Giannis. And he's even more reliant on that left block, where he prefers to face up the most. However, he's rated above average in efficiency, but you can be sure when they need a bucket, they'll be looking for AD down low on that left block late in games. Overall, the Bucks are much more efficient with their post-ups, shored up by Brooke Lopez and Chris Middleton being very good at getting buckets from down there. A real bright spot down low for the Lakers is Dwight Howard, who continues to surprise with his good play all season long. Both these teams get to the line the same amount, tied for 7th in the league in free throw rate. Of course, when you've got Giannis on your team generating double-digit free throw attempts, he'll keep the rest of the team afloat. The Lakers rely on both Davis and James to produce trips to the charity stripe, but like I had shown in my LeBron free throw video, his struggles are very real and he's very close to a career low in attempts. What is more concerning to both these teams is that they rank at the very bottom of the league in free throw percentage. There is no doubt there will be many playoff games decided by crucial free throws and this is a serious Achilles heel to both teams and no real hope in sight. Both teams also block a lot of shots, which isn't surprising considering how much length they have. The Lakers can run JaVale McGee and Anthony Davis together, and if you aren't taking it strong to the bucket, the ball simply won't get there. Plus, they can send Dwight out there for a few minutes at a time, where he's close to a career high in blocks per 36. Meanwhile, the Bucks force teams to drive into the paint and then wall off at the rim. And while Brooke Lopez is blocking the most shots of his career, only Giannis averages more than one a game, so they're doing it by committee a little bit more than the Lakers. With their bend but don't break defensive scheme, the bigs drop deep into the paint, inviting the mid-range, and if you want to take things further, do so at your own peril. Where these teams start diverging in terms of mode of attack is with their three-point frequency. While the Bucks have fully embraced the modern game, shooting 42% of their shots from deep to rank fourth in the league, the Lakers are closer to the bottom. Interestingly, they're both shooting almost the same percentage, though while Milwaukee has seven players averaging at least three and a half a game, including starting center Brooke Lopez, the Lakers only have four above that line. While there are shooters in the roster, they're simply not getting a ton of three-point shots out of their offense. And it's a bit concerning to me that LeBron leads his team in three-point attempts, yet is below 35% on them. Considering how often they post up and how little they shoot threes, the Lakers are a throwback. A lot like my big-ass bifold leather wallet slash suitcase that I shoved in my pocket every day for decades. But thanks to Ridge, there's a whole new way to carry your money and credit cards. Their ultra-thin and streamlined wallet is going to change my whole game, and I can finally get rid of all the useless receipts, business cards, and that latest Tom Clancy novel. I was in the gym last week shooting around, and holy crap, I couldn't hit the ocean from my back porch. I couldn't figure out what the heck was going on with my shot and why it was so off, but then I realized what the issue was. 
putting the Ridge wallet in my pocket was miraculous, and my jumper was completely wet, just like yours will be if you get one. And I can save you 10% off your order with free worldwide shipping in return by going to ridge.com slash bball and use code bball at checkout. Click on that link below in the description and you'll be as happy as Giannis is whenever he gets on the fast break and throws down a Eurostep dunk. What's fascinating about the pace these two play at is that while the Bucks are ranked first and the Lakers are 13th in terms of fast break frequency, they're pretty close. The Lakers aren't holding the ball for very long, ranking fourth in quickest time of possession, and it's the Bucks who spend the least amount of time with the ball, ranking the fastest team in the NBA in time of possession. Anxious to get down the floor quickly and let Giannis generate something for himself or a kick out to a teammate. One thing worth noting about the fast break is that the Lakers are elite at finishing their transition possessions, while the Bucks are a disappointing 21st in efficiency. Believe it or not, according to Synergy, Giannis is ranked average in transition, and so is Eric Bledsoe. And because these two use over 44% of these possessions, the overall ranking gets pulled down. Another huge discrepancy is with offensive rebounding. Starting JaVale, AD, and LeBron has led to tons of second chance opportunities for him, but it might be why their fast break defensive rating is below average at 19th. They have to be careful they're not trading the two points at the rim for a quick three-point shot down the other end. Meanwhile, the Bucks very rarely crash the glass, intent to bomb away and maybe get the occasional long rebound, while making sure to get as many people back on defense as possible. This directly leads to their opponent three-point percentage. Interestingly, the Bucks are almost dead last in opponent three-point frequency, giving up more threes than all but two other teams in the NBA. A big reason is they are so concerned with inviting the mid-range, then walling off the rim with help from all angles, that kickouts for threes become readily available. That said, they've been around average in opponent three-point percentage, so this isn't completely killing them, but would have me worried if they face a good shooting team in the playoffs. The Lakers are 15th in opponent three-point frequency, so they're not exactly preventing teams from taking shots from beyond the arc but they are better at defending them, ranking 11th in opponent three-point percentage. Being so close to the top 10 means that this shouldn't be too much of an issue come playoff time. In terms of balance of attack, the Lakers have a legit one-two punch with LeBron controlling everything and Anthony Davis finishing off a lot of these plays. This is borne out by the usage percentage, with the third highest being Kyle Kuzma a little more than six points behind. The Bucks are a much different team in terms of hierarchy. It's Giannis, and then everyone else. He is 12 uses percentage points higher than Middleton at number two. He leads the team in points, assists, rebounds, and minutes. But here's a curious stat. His effect on the offense when he's on the floor versus off isn't that great. Of course, this could be a little related to their league-leading net rating. A lot of blowouts and scoring in garbage time while he rests. The Lakers are second in net rating with a more earthbound plus 7.2, which probably explains why LeBron has to play 35 minutes a game while Giannis can cruise by in only 30. Are both these teams on a collision course for the NBA Finals? I'm not so sure, since there are a number of games left and so many freaky things tend to happen in the playoffs. You can never be too sure. And with these two teams, there are enough little things that gnaw at me a bit to make me wonder if either of these teams will represent their respective conferences. But one thing is for sure, if they do, it will be an incredible series that no one will ever forget. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to B-Ball Breakdown so you can get alerted right away when we drop a new video. This season will be filled with incredible content, so don't miss it. You in?